Welcome to everyone. We are here talking about monetizing our assets uh, in the church uh, and how do we diversify the income so that we can greater have greater impact on our community, whether this is renting spaces in our churches for birthday parties, pickleball, sports, uh, having a cell phone tower on our facilities. Uh, at Christ Foundry used to rent out parking spaces because we were in apartment complexes that didn't have enough parking spaces. I saw that the Baltimore Washington Conference has made a contract with a uh, a car charging uh, stations for their churches in Washington D.C. We'll have an announcement about early childhood education we'll, as we're talking about the diversification of income for ministries. Well, uh, Christy Drenner once told me, if you think money, call Drenner. And so as we're going to be talking about monetizing assets here, uh, our first speaker today is our own conference treasurer, our director for the Center for Connectional Resources, Christy Drenner. And Christy, thank you for being here today, and I'll turn it over to you. All right. My pleasure. Always a great opportunity to be in a room with good United Methodists, so I appreciate the opportunity. I'm going to share my screen. This is always the white knuckle moment of if this is going to work. So give me one second. All right. Can you guys see that okay? Yes, we can. All right. So um, thank you so much for coming. Just a few couple items for you to consider as we go through. Actually, it's not sharing the way I want. Give me one more second. Uh, let's see. Sorry about this. There we go. Mm -hmm. All right. Can, okay, good. You can see the one screen. Perfect. Okay. So a couple of items that uh, I want us to think about as you're entering into this conversation. Um, a question, uh, we'll talk about three big items, legal tax and insurance. I know everybody's shocked that I'm bringing up the I word, but uh, we're going to start with the legal part. So a lot of questions I get asked often are, will making a, a profit put my 501c3 status at risk? The answer is no, if you follow the rules. There's nothing inherently wrong with making a profit. You just need to make sure that you understand what tax compliance is required for doing so. And we'll talk about that in the next slide. The second question I get a lot is, should I create a new entity to handle this new revenue stream? Well, that's really a a question that the church should ask about what its unique needs are. We have several churches, as Owen mentioned, different examples. Some of them um, do open separate entities and some do not. We have a church that has a coffee shop and they felt it was a best practice for them to open a new corporation that was uh, strongly tied and to the existing church body from a governance standpoint, but from a tax standpoint, it made more sense for them to have a separate entity. You might also pursue that if you wanna have grants that help fund part of your programming and you wouldn't normally be able to receive grants as a church. So those are some of the things to think about, but um, it's a good question to ask. Um, I also want to highlight the importance on this legal slide of thinking about, you know, what having clear church policies and procedures. So work with your leadership team to make sure that this new revenue stream that you're looking at meet your church's objectives, not just from a financial standpoint, but from a, a value standpoint as well. You know, some uh, revenue streams are more conducive to living inside of the church and some are not. So I'm just going to leave it at that. But you want to make sure that all of your leadership is in conversation about that. You also want to be thoughtful about protecting vulnerable populations that might be using your building. So if you have a preschool um, and based on the layout and the timing of everything, maybe it's not a great idea to rent out your fellowship hall to the local um, you know, chamber of commerce to have their weekly meeting. Those are some of the questions you just want to ask about making sure that you're protecting all of the uh, population that uses your church building. Also, it's a good idea to think about facility use agreements. This just, as, as with everything, when something's in writing and we clearly understand the expectations from both parties, it helps prevent legal questions down the road as best we can, right? Nothing is foolproof, but making sure that you have well-written policies that are documented, that adhere to what the church's um, goals are, and having something that whoever's going to be using your space reads and understands is going to be critical to helping build for success as you look at alternate revenue streams. The big bear in the room always is unrelated business income. Uh, this is a term that scares people off if they know what it is, but it shouldn't. Really, it's just about understanding what are the requirements to be able to generate revenue and appropriately report it back to the IRS. 
the federal government. So um, there's a three uh, fold test about whether the income you're receiving is truly unrelated business income. Um, and so the first is, is it a trade or business? Is it regularly carried on? And is it, is it or is it not substantially related to furthering the exempt purpose of the organization? Now, there are a ton of modifications, exclusions, exemptions to this general definition. Um, for Owen's example, if you rent out parking spaces at church, it can trigger unrelated business income tax if you have debt on the property, and then it won't if you don't have debt. So those little nuances need to be explored before you decide, oh, this is the right path we should take. Just uh, in May, the General Council on Finance and Administration did an exceptional training on all of the different pieces of um, UBIT. And so I would highly recommend that you follow this link and go to that training. It's also located on our CCR section of the website, but I'm sure um, this will come to you after the presentation. Um, it also ended with a great question and answer session for about 10 or 15 minutes where churches were asking, hey, if I want to have a... Um, a food pantry, or if I want to sell parking lots, or if I want to have a cell tower. So some of the things you might already be thinking about are probably going to be answered at least in part on this webinar. So I check that out. The other tax piece that you need to think about is sales tax. So some of the um, alternate revenue streams might generate the need for you to remit, collect and remit sales tax based on the business that you're doing. So you want to make sure that you ask those questions based on the type of revenue that you're looking at. Insurance. So always consult with your agent. Um, sometimes they have sample facilities use agreements that they can provide you. Um, you also want to have conversations about um, what, when am I required to notify my insurance company when I have a new facility use agreement or a new partner that's going to be renting the space. You want to make sure that you understand the types of activities that are already covered by your policy and if you need to get additional coverage based on whatever revenue stream you're looking at. So I had a church I spoke to recently that said, you know, with our change in the insurance program, they were not sure that they could host large groups. It led to a great conversation with their insurance provider, and they did need to add a little bit of extra coverage for a large group that they were hosting. So make sure that you have those conversations ahead of time. And then if you are going to be renting, let's say, to a soccer program, chances are they are going to have their own insurance for the program. So you want to make sure that you understand what is your insurance company's expectation for the proof of insurance that you will need to get from that entity. Now, if part of your revenue strategy is to increase the number of weddings that you're doing each month, chances are you're not going to need to ask the mother of the bride for a copy of her personal home insurance policy. But when you're talking about getting into a partnership with a larger organization, that would be a case where it might come into play. And the last slide, um, I would say just best practices as you're moving into all this and you're thinking in creative ways this afternoon and, you know, into the future is find the experts, the tax, the legal experts that will help you answer these questions. Each answer and each solution is so contextual to the church. As it says, there's not one size that fits all for revenue streams and for opportunities or for requirements. So make sure that you're finding the right people to help you with this. I always say it's worth paying a little bit today to set something up well so that you won't have to have issues or can prevent as many issues as you can in the future. So if you need recommendations of um, individuals to help you, I am more than happy to share those. But my favorite question to ask anytime anybody will give me a microphone is, and I do this all day, every day as well, what am I not asking that I should be thinking about? That, you know, we're going to have an example later of a company that does this for tons of churches across the country. It's wrote to them, right? Like they're, they, you know, click and repeat, great program, but you, this is your first time to do it. So take advantage of asking 900 questions. Make sure that you're asking them, okay, what do churches need to think about for any different size? So I would just encourage you to, to not be afraid and just to start asking all the questions. So hopefully this 30,000 foot view of some of the business office, legal tax and insurance um, considerations will help frame your conversation as you move forward. Um, 
Well, Chrissy's going to have to go. She has another meeting that she has to be to, so I'm thankful for her being here. But I want to pause uh, very briefly to see if there's any quick questions for her. All right. Hearing none. Uh, uh, Owen, sorry. Didn't know if you wanted me to put them in the chat or just ask. But uh, two things. One is... And y'all correct me if I'm wrong, but if, if a church is going to enter into a long-term agreement, they need to get that approved through their district's board of church, their church committee on buildings and locations. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Thank you. I totally, that slipped my mind. And since your church has recently gone through this, I'm glad you're speaking into it. And then the other item, if, if you end up getting somebody else's insurance and you have your church named as an insured person, do we also need to include the conference as a named insurer? It would be a best practice if that is the situation, yes. Sometimes just proof of insurance is required and sometimes additional named insured. But if you get into a, a long-term agreement such as that, please reach out to my office and we'll help you navigate that. Thank you. Great points, Kenneth. Thank you. Thank you, Kenneth. And thank you again, Christy. I know you have to go. So thank you for being here. So thank you. Our next presenter is... Sorry, I did have a question in the chat. I don't know if that's for now or later. Okay. Um, yeah, it was about the tax implication of leasing space in our building. And are there any risk of losing tax exempt status if we use the income to support operations? Yes. Yes, and I, sorry, I skipped that because I thought Christy answered that mm -hmm. uh, in there, and and we'll hold that, and I think Joe, Joe will be able to speak to that as well, mm -hmm. and so. Yeah, and if next. she has anything additional to add, I'll email it to her, and she can um, email or respond, and I can get back with you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Terry. So our, our next speaker is with Horizon, Horizon Stewardship, not a stranger to most of us here in the North Texas Conference. He has worked with uh, thousands of churches and has been doing a lot of, um, I, um, I am subscribed to, uh, uh, to his uh, email and to his newsletter. And so I saw that Horizon Stewardship has been thinking about this, about monetizing assets. And, and I really appreciated how they were thinking about it. And so I've asked Joe to come here and share with the North Texas Conference. So, Joe. Well, thank you for, um, uh, thank you for the invitation today. Um, Christy did a great job of explaining that everything is contextual. Um, what I'm going to try to do today is to provide you resources that um, will help you and your leaders walk through the process. Um, in, in general, the risks are pretty limited to losing either um, your uh, federal tax exemption or your uh, state uh, uh, property tax exemption. Uh, it would have to be uh, a very unusual circumstances, but there are, there are those circumstances. Um, and so this is why uh, she said you need to um, get counsel from tax professionals. Uh, and, and we're going to tell you the same thing at Horizons. What I am hoping to do is to provide resources and a framework that encourages you and your leadership teams to begin to explore uh, asset-based uh, funding strategies uh, for a variety of reasons. Um, and then I'm going to show you uh, some of the resources that we have posted. It's a growing edge for us. Um, we can only be so much of an expert because it changes from city to city, state to state. Uh, the federal part is a lot easier to describe. So right now you're looking at a screen, giving365.com. This is where you're going to find uh, my slides and the resources that um, I'm recommending to you. Um, there is a 30-minute video of um, Stan Rife with Cape and Krause. If you guys followed us during PPP, uh, you saw him a number of times. And we are talking about uh, unrelated business income tax and a lot of the very specific um, questions that will come up. This is a, a video that I think is 
um, particularly helpful to share to leadership groups um, so that there is a general understanding of the, um, the really what should be limited risk and fairly unusual uh, need to pay um, unrelated business income tax. If you are, it's, it's, uh, and you are properly allocating um, your overhead expenses, and you've done everything to mitigate uh, your need to do that, it probably means you are making scads of money that you're able to use to um, support other ministries. And, and that would actually uh, be a good thing. So if you go to giving365.com, um, you're going to see this sign-in page. If you click on webinars and presentations, the first webinar that's loaded in there is this one. And then underneath it are a series of uh, uh, resources. Then there's that video I was talking about. And then underneath that are a number of articles and examples of uh uh, written by people who um, assist churches uh, and other organizations find and use unutilized space in their um, in their settings. I, I want to give you Horizon's perspective on this, and this may also um, help you if you're talking to your um, church leadership or to your finance team as to why your church would want to be looking. Uh, at using its uh, assets. Her Horizon's perspective is that um, we have simplified the whole idea of funding in the church to uh, this illustration, which we use um, calling it the integrated funding uh, strategy model. And, and there in the beginning is your vision. And there's more than just that. Um, uh, as we break that out, there's your mission, your vision, uh, your discipleship pathway, your theology of generosity, that's all in there. And then surrounded by that are buckets, we call them disciplines, but they're really buckets that hold um, dozens of best practices. But if, if you're trying to share with your church leaders uh, dozens and dozens of best practices, they uh, tend to have their eyes rolled back in their head. And so just keeping it uh, basic like this helps to communicate at a high level, which generally helps you um, obtain permission to move forward. And then you can unpack those. And then the outer ring is talking about the various funding strategies. And one of those is church asset strategies. Um, we believe that um, God has entrusted each of you as a leaders with a number of assets to steward, uh, time, talent, financial resources, and uh, your building. And, and for the most part, uh, what we see is that um, very often churches will sit with 75 to 80 percent vacancy over the course of the week, and that may not be good stewardship in your setting. And so this is how we come about this as a, a fundamental uh, funding strategy that's really based in uh, the idea that um, we are to steward all the resources in our care, our assets being one of them. So let's get into it. Um, this is a, a breakout of a, of a resource that Cape and Krauss and Horizons put out, uh, essentially giving you 12 different steps to think about as you uh, consider monetizing your assets. And, and the first is step back and make sure that this is aligned with all of your um, funding strategies, that it's aligned with your mission and vision. Um, your treasurer talked a few minutes ago about whether it's an appropriate business or not um, and, and what your purpose is. And so I would think first is this aligned, um, the whole concept of using space. And then 
begin to study the assets that uh, can best be leveraged or um, monetized, look for underuse space, evaluate marketability or local demand, uh, and any capital or regulatory uh, requirements you have. There are companies that will come in and, and they'll simply do this for you. They'll, um, they'll look at your space, they'll look at your activity, they'll look at the appropriateness of it, uh, they will look at um, what regulations are, they'll look at market value, they'll look at capacity um, within, the, um, within the market and give you a report. And I've actually put some of those reports in Giving 365 under this webinar uh, so you can see. I've also put um, an, an outline. It was really an, an email uh, one of these folks um, uh, sent to me uh, as I was introducing them to a church. And in their case, it was three on-site days, uh, and they were charging $3,000 a day or $9,000 to create essentially a plan um, from someone who is used to looking at um, all of the factors that come into play uh, as to the whole of your asset mix. The third thing is consider partnership opportunities. Too many times as churches, we, we think about going it alone, where um, really as Christians, we're most often better together. Are there organizations that are already doing a great job at this idea we have? And perhaps maybe we can invite them into our space and we can join with them. They may pay revenue. Um, they may not pay uh, revenue to you. Uh, they may simply come into your space and um, use your um, use your uh, volunteers uh, and and allow you to expand your ministry. So this isn't only about money, um, and that's what that um, integrated funding strategy uh, tries to do is to to say it really is about your mission and vision. Who is God calling you to be in your community today? And what's the best way to do that? And sometimes it's to get at, um, it's to see that your assets are utilized uh, by someone who can most effectively do that ministry. Sometimes it's uh, to, to gather uh, financial assets that you can redeploy in other ways. But thinking about this holistically and taking your leadership team through because people will come in with one set of ideas and this illustration, which is available to you in Giving 365, helps walk you through what some of these uh, pieces look like as you come through. The other is becoming a, a benevolent landlord. Um, I worked with a, a church in Little Rock. They planted in the poorest zip code in Little Rock in a crime uh, infested area. Uh, one of the interesting benefits is that crime has gone down like 40% since they've occupied that space, but they bought an old Kmart and they knew they weren't gonna need all of it. And so they thought about what businesses will help our community? What can we do that um, not only makes us, or, or, or that is, uh, doesn't make us the most money, but creates the most missional impact? So some of their um, tenants are um, what they call, um, uh, they call themselves a benevolent landlord that they rent at a lower price than um, this organization might find somewhere else, but they do it to create impact in the community. So one um, of the, the entities they have is a, a gym. They couldn't get a gym in this area. So they were able to bring a gym in that at this location cuts their membership by 50% because their rent is less. They brought in a barber training school because they needed to, um, uh, because unemployment is a big deal in their zip code. And so being a benevolent landlord is an option to steward your assets, even if the monetary impact isn't as great as if you simply put it out on the market, but it may actually advance your missional cause, which was what you're about, not um, getting more revenue. 
So uh, your treasurer talked about this, ensuring that all the legal documents are there to protect the interest of the party. Some of that um, is uh, um, making sure that uh, insurance is in place, that you are abiding by the regulations of the annual conference, safe sanctuary, uh, that you, and some of these um, additional expenses can be paid for by um, whoever is renting for you. Um, one of the things you might want to consider is creating a separate legal entity um, simply because there's some amount of risk. And, and while it is a perfect protection, it is a legal separation between the church and the, uh, the leasing space. So you could outsource this space, rent it to um, a, a, a nonprofit or another entity that you have control over, and they would make the lease to, uh, to someone else as a way of protecting you. Again, I'm not an attorney and not a CPA. Um, I would seek their counsel uh, because the... Um, those protections of LLCs and, and other corporate entities vary from state to state. The other is understanding federal, state, and local reporting uh, tax rules. Sales tax are different from county to county, potentially even city to city, uh, different in the state. So uh, typically a local CPA would have a good understanding of what that is and what the triggers are for that. Um, consider the implications of having a mortgage on your uh, property. Christy mentioned that uh, in the parking lot, that if you rented the parking lot out and it had debt on it, it would be one of the triggers that might make you subject to um, uh, unrelated business income tax. That only applies if that um, mortgage was for the construction of that property. So if the parking lot was put in before and it now there's a loan on it uh, that and the parking lot was taken as additional collateral because you built a children's building on the other side. Um, you can ask your um, bank or uh, your foundation, uh, whoever you're borrowing from to release that um, or to uh, be clear when you're speaking to the um, uh, tax assessor that this is um, uh, that this is not for the original purpose. Now, I said tax assessor. Um, what we're talking about here are federal taxes. Uh, so you would want to document that that parking lot was built, that this mortgage is not related to it. But even if it is, many times your lenders are over collateralized and you can get them to release a small portion that you're using for this um, purpose. And that would allow you to uh, avoid that trigger. Uh, con consider the implications on local and property tax exemption. A lot of this has to do with um, whether it is a related business or not, uh, and the way that you're um, by the way that your bylaws are written. Uh, it's a little more complicated in the United Methodist denomination, uh, and, and I'm not going to try to be the uh, expert. I wish Christy was here with us to answer that. But when we're working with churches that are able to change their uh, own um, organizational documents, uh, we ask them to expand it to um, uh, to make the greatest possible connection between those activities and what their stated purpose is. And uh, so many churches are able to uh, simply rewrite their organizational documents to allow them to um, make a connection which avoids the, the UBIT as well. Establish um, specific guidelines for allocating revenue through your uh, asset monetization. Um, churches 
for the most part, you have so much cost invested in the property. If you allocate all of that overhead, the janitorial, the, the, the supervision of the exterior of the property, the buildings and grounds, um, you can almost always wash any positive income you have by the expenses that are actually incurred against this. So I'm saying do this on the up and up, but very few churches that are working with capable CPAs are, are not going to be able to um, allocate a significant overhead expense against the income that's coming in from this resource, um, uh, this, this uh, revenue stream. And then determine whether your current legal structure uh, mitigates. I, I talked about this um, earlier about uh, using uh, different structures, not, uh, uh, not only to make yourself, for instance, in a better position to receive gifts from outside the, the church, um, from, non, uh, from corporate entities who often won't give to religious organizations so you can form a, a different 501c3. But this is also talking about making sure that you have set up the maximum um, protections you can. And you. Uh, uh, there was a question about uh, covering the conference's exposure when you do this. Hopefully, you're, um, if it's a long-term agreement and it's going through uh, your committee on buildings, then they're looking for that. If not, think about uh, the entity who actually owns the uh, the property, and, and there are attorneys in Texas who have different views on that, uh, but it does not hurt to um, protect the, uh, the conference while you're at it. And then work the numbers and make sure that you are creating something that is going to add missional value, that's going to add financial value to the church or financial value uh, to the church. Many times people will say, this is a great idea, we're going to put it in, and then they end up feeding it. They decide they want to put in a daycare, and then they, they're they not um, able to generate enough revenue to actually cover the true cost of having that entity there. So if it's done on a missional basis and you're using it that way, then it makes sense. But um, if you're going to establish a strategy of asset allocation, um, you want to be able to uh, calculate a positive either missional or financial return and and this is something that should be done annually and reported back to your leadership so they can see the positive value that this has happened, uh, that this is uh, causing. Um, and uh, it also will allow you to talk about impact. One of those disciplines in the ministry uh, integrated funding model is telling your impact story. One of the most important things in uh, creating uh, streams of revenue, especially around giving. And when you measure the effectiveness, another one of those disciplines, then it allows you to um, tell the story, put a face on it, but also support it with data. The last has already been covered. Um, uh, make sure that you're using a qualified CPA um, and, and or tax attorney as you, um, as you move forward. This is um, a, how the document looks all together, and all of those are available for you in um, giving365.com. Thank you, Joe. And I want to remind everybody the questions that you have um, to be able to put them in your chat. And we're planning on allowing time for, for those, but I, I appreciate that. And those and the slides that were shared and more information is there available for free there at Giving365. So I really want to encourage you to, and like this got on my radar because I am subscribed to Giving365. Uh, so I want to encourage you to do that. The other way this got on my radar is uh, is our next presenter. I got connected with him as the Center for Church Development is always looking for ways that we can strengthen our local churches. And uh, John Brochu has designed what I'm calling the Airbnb or the Uber 
for churches wanting to lease uh, their uh, gymnasiums, their ball fields uh, to organizations uh, that are looking for gymnasiums and ball fields. And as someone who has an eight-year-old, nine-year-old, you may have seen them pass by as they just got home from school. Uh, we are looking for practice fields all the time. And so uh, John has made a marriage of those two, and I've invited him to share with you. And this is one example of many how you can monetize the assets of your church. And so, John, thank you for being here, and I'll turn it over to you. All right. Oh, and thanks so much. I'm just super excited to be here. I know that this is what you guys are talking about, exactly what we built our platform for. And I know that um, some of you are already renting assets. You may be renting out gyms and, and meeting rooms. And to some of you, this is brand new. And so for both of those cases, we have created a platform that brings uh, a real ease of use to the process. Um, and I'll just give you a brief background, but. Um, I, I have uh, been a coach for a long time. Have, I'm a dad of three kids. Um, been a Christian my whole life. Um, and I have seen and, and lived the, uh, the trauma of trying to find practice fields for my own teams that I coach. And I have also seen the process um, on the other side. My background is in process auditing in the healthcare space and I'm an entrepreneur by uh, by trade but um, as I went into these places to utilize their assets that did allow me to do that I found that their processes were um, not the most efficient and sometimes uh, lacking completely and so we built a platform that allows a participant you know a coach a parent a player um, or maybe even a business with uh, a facility that has assets that they want to rent. And so, as Owen mentioned, we're kind of a, a VRBO for, um, for sports facilities, for meeting rooms, and things like that. We spent about two years developing this. Um, churches were forefront on our mind, but also school districts. School districts are beginning to use our platform because of state funding in Texas. They really are looking for extra revenue. Um, being on the leadership team at our church, I know that we're trying to figure out ways to just get people back on our campus post-COVID. And I'm sure, as uh, Joe mentioned a second ago, that's really what a lot of this is about. And and if uh, if that's a, uh, you know, a coach or a team or a kid or an adult that plays a sport that wouldn't come to church on Sunday, but would come to church because they play a sport and then the church has the asset they need to play it and they can and that person can be around other Jesus followers, then, you know, how how awesome is that? I mean, that's what we're all here for. So um, our our company is called Practice Plan. And um, we are um, fairly new. We, we started building this platform two years ago, and we just launched it last April, and we're growing pretty fast. Um, the, the beautiful thing about our platform for you is there's no cost to it. Um, so what, the way it works is you will... Um, set up your space. We will do all that for you. We will take the pictures. We will input all the data. Um, the only thing that we would require from you is your bank account money. I mean, your bank account money. We don't take your money. Your bank account for your money to get deposited into. Um, and then we use a, a third party payer called Stripe. So I'll just explain to you how it works. I'll go ahead and share my screen for just a second. Um, it's, a, it's fairly simple. I hope you guys can all see that now. Um, this is um, basically what our front page looks like. It's www.practiceplan.io. And when a, when a participant comes on here, they simply type in a zip code. I'll type mine in here. It's a Google search. Everything works off of Google on our platform. Uh, they type the zip code in, they hit the search button, and then they find the locations that are within that zip code. 
Um, you can see here's a sand volleyball court that a church near me um, lists on our site. There's also meeting rooms. Everything in that zip code shows, even things that aren't are below the line. Um, you can see all these different assets that are for rent. Um, and then things that are below the line, here's a classroom studio, um, things like that, that people can put the criteria in at the top, what date they want, what activity they're looking for. And we have them all, many, many things listed here. Um, so you just basically set this up like a VRBO. And then when somebody wants to book, they simply book a time. Uh, they find the time they want. They, they go to that site. Um, they can then change the day, see what's available. They pick it. They book it. They pay for it with their credit card. That money goes directly into your account. The way that we get paid is that we get a transaction fee, just like if you buy a ticket to the movies or if you go um, pretty much anything you buy online these days, you pay a convenience fee or a booking fee. And so that's that's how our platform makes money. We are a for profit entity. Um, and so once that transaction is made, then you as a facility and I'll show you quickly. And you guys, did that switch over? I'm not sure if it did. Let me just make, I'm just going to share my desktop because that would be. Dashboard. Easier. Calendar. Oh, you seeing the calendar there? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Um, so this is what the calendar looks like. So when you, when somebody makes a reservation, it shows up on here. We integrate completely with Google. So if you, if you do anything, Google, or if any of your um, systems you use within your church, you can download to Google, then it's a seamless integration um, for scheduling, or you could just simply use our scheduling. And um, we don't really tout ourselves as a scheduling system per se, but it works really well um, for churches, especially that may not may or may not have something in place. Um, so, yeah, we so uh, as a as a facility, then you would take reservations in. You could also pre-approve those. So. Um, if you wanted to pre-approve those, you could do that. It's, it's a little, it's another step in the process. Most people don't do that. They just take the reservations, the money goes into your account, then you can set up users and those users can then, um, get email and SMS text notifications whenever there's a reservation. So maybe your custodial staff or your sound team or whoever you need to see this can see this. And then they'll also get notifications that say, hey, you need to, you know, on Tuesday night, there's going to be a Girl Scout group in there or, or whatever it is, or, you know, going to be using the gym. So we need someone there to turn the lights on, that sort of thing. Um, as far as the um, uh, what Christy mentioned, the liability insurance, the facility use agreement, any policies you have, those are all uploaded here into the system. So that when somebody checks out, they click a box that says that they agree to your policies or that they agree to your facility use agreement. It also, if you require liability insurance, when somebody books a reservation, then they are required to upload their liability insurance before they can complete that reservation. So we've kind of put all of that into one place. Um, what we want to do is make the process really easy for you. Um, we want to also get access for people that don't know you're renting. So you may, you may not be renting something, or even if you are, how do people in your community know that? Our goal is to build this platform up to where, you know, if I'm a, a, a either a dad coaching a you know an eight-year-old soccer team or maybe I'm a club coach that needs a regular place to practice I know that your assets are there and I can use those and I can utilize those and take it from somebody who has been in that club sport world they have the money and so they're willing to pay to have facilities to use whether that be an open field a practice field a cricket pitch I mean there's just a lot of you guys know uh, I don't need to, to preach to the choir here, but um, 
we, we want to make sure that you're getting the exposure because you may decide, hey, we want to rent our gym. That's a good idea. We have a nice half court basketball gym. Let's go rent it. Well, how are people going to know that? Your members are going to know that, but how are people in the community going to know that? And I think the draw is to draw people outside of your membership. And so um, that's where we come in. We will also um, come to you if you look at uh, these. Let me go back to this is our actual site. If you, we also will go and do some facility videos and just give you some. These are just kind of some brief little, hey, here we're at this location. They have these things to rent. You can see all this on our website, of course. Um, I didn't want to go into too big of a demonstration, um, but the setup is pretty easy. Again, it's free for you. And um, the your participants that rent it will just pay a convenience fee. Now, um, I, I saw you saw that uh, sand volleyball court a second ago. They don't charge to use that, but they want to keep a schedule. And so um, because that's a zero charge, there's still a five dollar platform fee. So if people rent this sand volleyball court, then it's a five dollar fee that goes to us. But there's no revenue that goes to the church. So you and you can, of course, set your fees however you want to set them. We can. The nice thing about being on this platform too is you can kind of see what the market is around you and uh, you might be surprised at what uh, people would pay to to utilize your assets uh, some of the rates are are getting up there um so owen i hope i did a, a good enough job of kind of explaining what we are and what we do um, that was very helpful yes Okay, we would love to work with all of you and you can, uh, we can put our website in the chat or my email in the chat and, and Jessica DiFiore is also on this call somewhere and uh, she's, she's on our team and works with us on implementation. And so um, anyway, we appreciate being able to show you what we've done. Appreciate it. We've put the, uh, the website there in there and there are some questions for you. So please stick around. Uh, yes. yes. There's questions for Joe still uh, put those in the chat. Uh, uh, your, your last presenter is yours truly. And I'm going to be very brief announcement went out today that the center for church development has secured a $1.25 million grant uh, from the Lilly endowment for Christian parenting. And our purpose of that is to help churches disciple young children, engage new families, and maximize income through early childhood education. Uh, my presentation is brief because our long presentation is going to be on September 26th at 10.30 a.m. to noon. And you can register for that at the attached link. You can see the, uh, the announcement that went out today. And so you are hearing it uh, uh, here live about this grant uh, from the Lilly Endowment. And so you can see the, the registration. We'll have more information on the 26th. So now to the questions that are, are coming in. Uh, we had two questions from Dallin Morgan, who's planting a church in Anna, Texas, a place where sports is a very big deal. And her question was, what size gyms are people looking for? And what are the process? Uh, they are in the process of building and considering a half gym versus a full gym. What are people looking for? Yeah, so um, I assume that question's for me, but, uh, you know, if you build a full gym, you can use it in half courts, of course. And so uh, that's uh, a lot of the, the clubs are looking for full court practice access, but they're also, you know, if you don't have that space, they are utilizing half court. If you, if you, can uh, build the full gym, I would say build the full gym because you can use that space for a lot of other things. Um, the thing I didn't mention earlier is that a lot of uh, gyms are being used for yoga classes, spike ball tournaments, believe it or not, um, you know, camp gladiator classes on rainy days, things like that. And so those bigger spaces are definitely worth having. The other question that Dallin had was, if can they rent out their space on their end if they want to do direct, even if they're working with you, as long as they. Yes, of course. Um, just anything you list on our platform. Um, yeah, then there's no, we don't have any contract with you. If you wanted to do that on your own, you can. 
Um, and you can even create reservations within our system on your own. We would, of course, prefer that it go through our system so we get a platform fee. But, um, but yes, you can do that on your own. And so if you have like, a, like some of the school districts, for example, have a big weekend where somebody rents the whole everything, right? The football field, the, the track, the everything at once. And those are all separate contracts and they don't run those through our system. But the day the day to day rentals all come through our system and it's just it's really an ease of use for them. It's taken a huge administrative burden off of the person who's keeping the schedule, collecting the money, making deposits, making refunds. All that goes away. You won't you don't even touch the money ever. Yeah, thank you, John. And we got another question uh, for you from John Allen. It says, do you have uh, any examples of the experience and income from churches who are using your practice plan platform? Yeah, um, we do. And we have, um, there is, it, it really, it, there's a few things that's dependent on, of course, availability, what your rental rate is. Um, but we have some assets that are um, rented out from 5 until 10 p.m. every weekday. And then on the weekends from, you know, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. on Saturdays. And then on Sunday from 12 to 6. And so you can put in an hourly rate and, and do the math on that. Um, but it's a significant amount. I mean, it can be. Um, so. Anyway, I hope that gives you an idea. Um, there's some of the school districts are are bringing in hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. Um, I wouldn't expect a church with one or two assets to be anywhere near that, um, but several thousand for sure. So uh, Julie Harding asks about any esports tournaments or leagues. Uh, you know, we don't have that. We, we haven't seen that yet, but that is that is really uh, an awesome idea and super easy for us to add. Um, and that would be super fun for you guys to do. <laughs> I mean, uh, that would bring in a lot of the, the generation that we're trying to reach for sure. So great idea. Jessica Wright asks you if it's easy to adjust the availability uh, on the platform. Yeah, it's super easy. Um, I, I, I could show you, but I don't know how much time we have, but it's uh, you basically just go in on the asset. So you build a location that maybe it's, you know, it's, uh, I live in Lucas, Texas. So maybe it's Lucas UMC. And then underneath that, there's there's a gym and there's a soccer field and there's a, 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 a backstop, say. And to, ch to change the availability, you simply go on that asset and we actually have a button that says manage availability and you simply change the times. It's that it's really that simple and it stays on those times until you change it again. Also, if you book something on the calendar yourself, then it doesn't show up as available to the public. So if you create a slot, we call them slots, um, that you have something internally from, say, you know, six to eight, then that asset doesn't become available until eight o'clock. And, and I can our, go through a demo, a complete demo with anyone that wants to see it. Our last question that we have uh, kind of feeds into that. Do you have consultants that will help the look at the church facilities to know if it's worth listing or not? Yeah, I, Chuck Church, I recognize you. I don't know if you remember me, but anyway, if that's you. Oh, um, yes, of course I do, John. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> how funny. Um, yeah, good to see you. Um, anyway, yeah, I mean, we we can certainly come out and look at them. Um, and, you know, if 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 it's some it, it doesn't really need to be worth listing. The, the market's going to tell you that, because if if you list it, there's really no downside. I mean, other than nobody comes, right? Um, and you go, well, we listed it and there must be something in the area that's better than what we've got. And, um, and some of the school districts are that way too. It, there's competition for resources, but if you don't list it, of course you don't know, 
But that competition, you'd be surprised at some of these uh, levels of teams that will say, you know, I don't want to pay for the turf football field at my high school because that's a real high rate. And I can go to the grass field. That's pretty nice over at the church and there's no lines, but that's okay. And I can be there by myself. I don't have to worry about somebody coming over because I've got an email on my phone or a text that says, Hey, from 4 PM to 6 PM, we have this reserve. And so that's really helpful in that regard. Um, so there is some competition, but I think uh, you'll, you'll, you'll figure that out as you, as you list for sure. Well, uh, thank you, John. And thank you, Joe, uh, uh, for your presentations. And there's, again, the links are in the chat. Be sure and grab those. And if you need them, you can always reach out to Jessica Vargas at Vargas at ntcumc.org. And I want to thank Jessica Vargas for organizing this, for promoting this, for coordinating this. Uh, it's been very helpful. Um, and I thank all of y'all for being here today. Again, I want to remind you, we have our September 26th webinar about the Leveraging Early Childhood Education to Disciple Families, uh, which will be more information about the Lilly Grant that uh, Center for Church Development just got. And so I just thank you all for your presence and for your ministries. And if you can think of further ways in which the Center for Church Development can assist you in your ministry, please reach out to us. We are grateful for your ministry and may the Lord bless you and keep you and prosper your ministry. Appreciate you. God bless. Thank you so Thank you. much.